What is he like? Cameras off, sitting on the couch at home. I think he even said this, that like the age you become famous is like kind of the age you stay at forever. At heart, he's like a 16 year old. You said you met Bieber before the whole tattoo. What was it like? witnessing that in real time. Yeah, I mean, it was strange. Obviously, he was dealing with a lot. He was under a microscope and like, it's weird, America, we love like prodigies. Yeah, we idolize them, we love to build them up and then want to watch them fall. Welcome into the podcast, another episode of Live In Large. I am so excited for today's guest. I've known him since literally day one in Los Angeles. He's been a huge inspiration of mine and millions of others in the cinematography world. Welcome to the show, Taylor Cut Films. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Alrighty Bro, then. <laughs> let's get the small talk going. Yeah, let's get some small talk. You moved to Los Angeles literally the day I moved to Los Angeles. Yeah, I was moving into 1600 Vine the day you were buying sheets at Bed Bath & Beyond. Yep. So I bumped into you and Logan at Bed Bath & Beyond. I, I think I just like started up a convo with you. I'm like, oh, are you guys moving into the building yeah. across the street? Like, what do you? And then, yeah, we bought sheets. We bonded over <laughs> linens. <laughs> we were, uh, I think that Bed Bath & Beyond went out of business. But a lot of I was getting are, sheets yeah. for my air mattress. I was living in the closet. Yeah. You came with a little more money and had your own nice apartment. Um, was that purely coincidence that you moved to 1600 Vine or was that a plan? Um, no. I mean, I didn't even look anywhere else. I... I was touring with Usher at the time, and he was uprooting from uh, Atlanta to um, Los Angeles because he was filming The Voice. So we were like back and forth a bunch. Mm -hmm. And I was living in New York. I grew up in New Jersey, so like I was still just living at home. And I asked a friend. His name was Alfredo. Well, is he hasn't changed his name? <laughs> his, name his name is Alfredo Flores, but he was Bieber's photographer. Mm -hmm. And I just said, I'm like, do you know of any good buildings? I think I might like, you know, switch coasts and move. And he said, why don't you check out this building? It's called 1600 Vine. And he said, he's like, my buddy King Batch just moved in there. <clears throat> and I didn't like, I didn't know much of Vine, to be honest. Like, yeah. I didn't know like the platform or really that much about it. But like, I looked on an off day and I just asked if they had anything by the pool. And yeah, like the day I looked at the building was the day I signed the lease. Um, and then, yeah, just coincidentally, I guess everyone just ended mm -hmm. up moving in there. So made a bunch of friends, obviously, like yeah. you and everyone else. But yeah, I didn't know the intention wasn't like, oh, this is going to be the content building. It was just like someone recommended that it's a cool building. I didn't even look anywhere else. And I was like, this looks nice. There's a pool. Yeah. You've been here for 10 years now. Was yeah. that move out of your home state difficult? Mm, I weirdly, I moved a bunch as a kid. So like, I don't know, ch I'm, I like change like I mm -hmm. like you know even like I went to school in Baltimore and my family's from South Africa so like I like really yeah I did I'm, not know I'm, that yeah I'm South African so do you I have mean, a uh, passport um not anymore <clears throat> my parents had dual citizenship I don't think they ever renewed it or or for me either but um no I mean I wanted to like I and I was like touring with Usher like for two years at that point so it was like we were you know, the, the first month I was like with him, we went to London like seven times. So like I got used to just like kind of being a nomad. But I mean, it is nerve wracking, like just being like, oh, I'm going to like, can I thrive out here? Can I survive out here? Like, what's the vibe going to be like? But we had done, I think we had done like a season of The Voice and he was about to do his second. So like I was kind of familiar, like I had a rental car every time I was here and I got used to like driving from my hotel to like you know, the universal lot mm -hmm. and just all of that stuff. Um, I just remember when I first moved here, I was like, palm trees, I'll never get used to this. This is like, I was just like, so like mind blown by palm. I'm like, oh, I'm going to yeah. be on vacation every day. And then that kind of like fades away after a little while. But no, I mean, it was nice to, and it was nice that the building was, um, there were so many creators. So you didn't, it didn't mm -hmm. feel lonely. You know what I meant? Like, it's like, you got to, yeah, you got to collaborate with a lot of people all the time. So it didn't feel lonely. Which Let's backtrack good. a little bit before the Usher time. What got you yeah. into cinematography film as a whole? Like, were there inspirations for you or just one day you were like, I want to do that? <laughs> um, <laughs> my, my mom worked when I was younger. So my grandma would babysit me and she would um, just like put on Disney movies and just and, like movies she liked in general as like a way of babysitting. So I think I just got like enamored with like movies and mm -hmm. watching watching yeah films so that was like my first kind of passion um and my freshman year of high school you, you were able to take an elective and i took video production as an elective 
Um, and you learn, I learned how to like edit on Adobe Premiere and I would film on like mini DV tapes yeah. and stuff like that. So, and even earlier, my dad had like a VHS cassette camcorder and I'd film me and my friends like skateboarding. And like, as I was filming, I was like, you know, you couldn't really edit. So I'd like film stop and then tell someone to right. do something else. So I think I just like got into the idea of telling stories through video super early on. And I think I always knew I wanted to make videos and then that's why I majored in in school and stuff. So yeah, I guess from, yeah, my childhood to yeah, now, like I'm fortunate that like I found a passion that I like and I got to like, just keep at it. Were you always gifted at it? Like, did you just have a natural eye for it or is that something you learned over time? Mm, I mean, you obviously get progressively better, but yeah, I think I like, I think because I was passionate about it, it translated into like me being good at it. It was mm -hmm. like, it's hard to be good at something you don't truly have a passion for. But yeah, I mean, I would do my friends like homework assignments and video production. Like if they were like, oh, make a music video or something, like I would just do their homework for them. I'd be like, oh, I'll make your music video because I just like loved doing it. So yeah, I think I always had like an eye for it and like, I don't know. It was my way of like expressing how I felt too. It's like, even I would spend my weekends like editing in mm -hmm. high school, you know what I mean? So it's like, I always want like, yeah, I, I loved it. So I think that translated to me being good at it. Cause then you just want to learn how to be better at it, you know? Well, you're a little bit older than me and I got my star like right around when YouTube became popular, like Devin super tramp era. Mm -hmm. So I was able to like learn how to edit through YouTube tutorials. Mm -hmm. How did you learn? Did you just learn on your own? Because I feel like YouTube really wasn't around when you started. Yeah, there was, um, I mean, I was a, yeah, that video production class like helped in terms of like understanding like frame rates and stuff. And then I was mm -hmm. a film major in college and that, you know, you watch films and you like learn about framing and stuff like that. And, um, you know, so that helped me. But in turn, I remember my freshman year of college, I bought like a Canon 7D and like everything that we, you can like rent in like the university, like camera mm -hmm. lockers and stuff was not digital. So right. I, I like taught myself digital. I, th I think I bought a book by Philip Bloom about like how to shoot on digital. So like I learned how to um, double the frame rate, you know, with the, the shutter, shutter speed yeah. and like what ISO, how it's equivalent to film stock and what, you know, and what native ISO is on the camera and all of that stuff. So it, it was from a book that Philip Bloom and he still does like a bunch of camera reviews and stuff. So he's like, got that like slider, right? Yeah. yeah, he, has yeah, like yeah. A, he has like a, yeah, but he, yeah, he kind of like that book helped me figure out how to achieve like a cinematic look in a digital form. Um, and I remember I would like even teach my like professors sometimes, like I would be like, Oh, with my Canon 7d, like if you use this ISO and I'm like, I remember because they, it, it was like during that change between like we're digital and like D DSLR started to right. become like, it was like AVC HD or whatever, like the, yeah, yeah, everyone was like, we were using the mini DVs. We're using all of that. And then like, all of a sudden the photography cameras were able to do video. Mm -hmm. And then that all of a sudden became this huge boom, you know, where it was like that people were getting like the seven D and the five D Mark one. And then like, then the Canon one DX and right. came out and like all of a sudden that became like a whole revolution. And it's like, now, you know, we're shooting on the Sony a seven S's and stuff. And it's like yeah. now digital cameras and FX threes and all that stuff they use for Hollywood movies. So right. it's, it's cool. It's crazy to see how far it's come because I learned also on those like old ones and we had to like plug them in and like record the mm -hmm. the footage in. Yeah. And then I got a DSLR a Canon 70D and like I edited on Final Cut Pro 7, mm. but the H.264 codec didn't work. So I had to put it in like a MPEG stream clip and like yeah. convert it to like Apple ProRes. Yeah. And everybody else, I was like, I liked the look better of the DSLR than I did those cameras. Yeah. Um, what got you into the music space? Because I know before Usher, you mentioned in one of your videos, you went on tour with some guy with like Gym Class Heroes. Oh yeah, Chris Cab. Okay. Yeah. I, um, in high school, I would like, I would, my main things were I do like mixtapes of like the different sports teams, like our basketball team and stuff. And I would always just like throw music under it to make it feel like hype. Like I loved like the movie Friday Night Lights and stuff. So like I would do that. I would even like shoot my teacher's weddings and I would just put like the Goo Goo Dolls in the background. So like I always loved the pairing of like music and visuals because like if you don't know how to record audio or do dialogue or like write 
for, you know, a screenplay, mm -hmm. it's like you can just take a music and be like, oh, this like this makes me feel a certain way. And if I put visuals to it, I can kind of tell a story like that. So and I, I feel like a lot of people, too, like even if you're in a car and like a song is playing, you're like look out the backseat window and you're like vision like a music video. So like I've always had that kind of like musical eye where it's like if I hear a song, I'll picture visuals. So um but yeah, I, 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 he, someone from his team reached out to me because like the first kind of things I ever did in where I was, I grew up in New Jersey is I would go into New York, this New York city, and I would like sneak into concert venues. Um, and I would like find on Facebook, like up and coming artists that I thought were cool. One of the first shows I ever shot actually was, um, Mac Miller, rest in peace. It was like his first album. He did a he was performing at Webster Hall and I would just like make friends with the bouncers and I would just show up with a camera and I'd make like a fake credential and just be like, oh, I'm shooting the show. And then I would just go in the front and I'd take pictures and videos and then I'd find like the manager's info or I like would DM them or whatever and just send them like an edit. And then like, that's kind of how I started to get my name out there. And I think like a manager who was repping Chris Cab at the time Chris Cab like um, was signed to like Pharrell's label because he's based in Miami, and they were like, "Oh, we're going on a tour. He's opening up for Gym Class Heroes and T Pain. Like, if you want to come." And that was like my first like tour ever. So I just like it was like a month and a half, just in the back of a Sprinter van. I'd shoot that night, edit on my laptop mm -hmm. like after the show, and um, yeah, we just make like little tour recaps of like this is what this San like San Francisco was yeah. like or St. Louis was like or whatever. Yeah. What made you that hungry? at a young age because a lot of people, you know, when in my space, I get a ton of DMs from people, yo bro, I want to edit for you, yo bro. But yeah. I always tell them the best way to edit for me is edit something for mm. me and send it to me. You did that. You yeah. would go pro bono, take photos you snuck in, and then you would send it to them and then you put your work first and that spoke for you. What made you so hungry to do that for no money? I think I just wanted to like be involved in the space. Like even like in high school, I'd watch like Entourage on like HBO and like, I don't know. I just like that lifestyle just seemed like ex exciting to me. And I was just like, if these are musical artists that I like, or this is, you know, I just want, how do I be in that world? And for me, like I just knew how to film and edit. So I was like, I'll just be proactive and just go and shoot and edit and just see if it can lead to something. Cause I was working at like Best Buy at the time and I just knew I wasn't happy doing that. So I was like, all right, on the weekends, I'm going to go and film different artists that I thought were cool if they were like coming to New York or just whatever. And, you know, but yeah, I think if you like something, like you're saying, you just, the best way to like manifest it is just to like, you know, Nike, just do it. Like it, it, there's a reason why there, it's a, yeah. that slogan is cause it's like, just do it. And like, you don't know what's going to come from it, but like, yeah, sitting around and waiting is, it's not going to get you. And it's like, I still have to remind myself. Cause even if you reach a certain level of success, you have to like, be like, all right, I can't be like, I don't think I do well with complacency. Mm. I like, I'm, I'm the older I get, the more comfortable and at peace I get. I don't feel like it's a competition thing anymore, but I'm like, I, I'm never complacent. Like I, I want to direct movies and I want to like, when I watch the Oscars, it's like, okay, I want to be there. You know what I mean? So I think I still make active decisions every single day to like do bigger and better things. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, anyone watching like just complacency is a killer. So just like, if you feel like you want to do more, just like take steps to doing it, you know, just like do it, do it for free, spend money to go and do it, whatever. And then mm -hmm. like, you know, if you're putting that out into the universe, like something good's going to come back. So how did you become Usher's videographer after the Chris cab? I, it was funny cause the tour ended and I thought, like it was like a good month that went by and I'd quit my job at Best Buy to go on tour. And I remember saying to myself, like, I'm never going to work again. Like, this is it. It's over. But I ended up in that kind of New York scene of me sneaking into concert venues and stuff. I shot this guy named Hoodie Allen and mm -hmm. his manager was Michael George. And like fast forward years later, he ends up like managing Martin Garrix and stuff. So we ended up like connecting through that. But I just had like connected with different managers from like shooting stuff and sending it out. And I think Usher was doing an album release where he was starring in an off Broadway show called Fuerza Bruta. And they needed someone to like film and like make an edit of that experience. And they reached out to a production company based in New York. And I had connected with someone from there and they were like, Oh, we have a good shooter that we know based in New York. And they recommended me and it was supposed to be like a four day gig. 
but it's like one of those things. It's like we kind of just like me and Usher kind of like connected and this t- and me and his team connecting. They also didn't have someone at the time, but it's like, you know, I, I just knew when to like not overstep and like when to talk and when to like, like when to make a joke and he had a good sense of humor and we like, I don't know, we just kind of vibe. So after like the four days, they were just like, um, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? And I'm like, nothing. And they're like, oh, we have Saturday Night Live. Like, why don't you come to Saturday Night Live? film that and the next day they were like oh what are you doing tomorrow i'm like oh nothing and they're like all right we're going to vegas for the billboard awards why don't you come to las vegas so i got on a plane to vegas and i remember i was in rehearsal filming it like falling asleep because i didn't like slept in like the five days just like shooting and editing and whatever and the day-to-day manager came up to me he's like call your family and say you're not gonna be home for a while and i was like cool with me so i just like literally it was it, it was like three years like nonstop mm-hmm. of just like that it, and it was it was good it was good timing too because he was in that like now I, I know what like a press cycle is and like in, like once you're done with an album you go on tour and you do all these shows and like all of that uh, but I didn't know what the heck that was back then so like it was perfect timing because that's what they were doing he just finished an album he was like touring all of like the the about to go on tour he was doing all like you know we went to london to the graham norton show they needed a, like an amex on stage show and then he was like did jimmy fallon and all of that so it was just like they were going they were going full mm-hmm. speed and they just wanted all they knew is they wanted it to be captured you know they didn't know if it was like going to be for a documentary they didn't know if it was going to be like and that was as vine was like starting to like just become a thing and like mm-hmm. instagram hadn't even done instagram videos yet it was still just like a square photo platform so it's like i got to like tap in with all of that and they like trusted me because i was like the youngest in their group you know they kept calling they called me baby jordan that was like my nickname because like i was fresh out of college i was like Mm -hmm. young and so i just my responsibilities kind of grew within the camp because they were like we don't know anything about social really so like you can like just show usher the pictures or whatever and if he likes them just post them and i was like coming up with captions thinking of like things to do we would do like skits and like I don't know. So like it was, yeah, it was good. It was great timing. It was just like, I, they needed that. I like was good at that. So it just like, yeah, it worked out. What is that life like as a young kid being pushed into like this tour life of someone so famous and so busy? And I'm sure every day you had to capture content, upload it, probably do edits, Hmm. just that constant repetitive cycle. What's that like, like keeping up with that lifestyle? It was, it was a good, I mean, Honestly, I'm so happy it ha- it happened not just because it was like exciting and whatnot, but it was also like it my whole perspective on life is different now because even before moving to LA and stuff, like being able to live vicariously through someone who is in the public eye and who's famous and like I got to see what it was like to, you know, walk in a crowd and like people wanted pictures and or even mm-hmm. just see like in the down moments that it's like, oh, fame and money don't make you happy. Do you know what I mean? So like I got this kind of like without having to go through it necessarily myself. So it, it helped a lot too when I ended up moving to LA, like we, you know, kind of foreshadowed and got to be around like people like Logan and all these other people that had to go through it like firsthand of being mm-hmm. like, you know, and I met like through Usher, like I met Bieber before he had tattoos and he was like going through this like fame and stuff. So it's like, I, it was, it was a nice experience to have for a handful of reasons. But like one of the, my main takeaways was like, Oh, if my, if my goal is just to be like rich and famous, like that's not gonna make me any happier because I can see that they still have you know, if, if not more problems, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Cause like, you know, more money, more problems. It's like, it's true. Cause you realize it's not going to fill this. Like if you have a hole, like that's not going to fill it. So, but I just, what I took away from it was just like, I got to really travel, like, which was something I've, you know, I've always really wanted to do. Like we went to Dubai and London and all these places within the first month. And these are all places I've never been to before. So I got to see the world in a very fortunate way with like someone who, you know, was, being able to make a lot of money and be able mm-hmm. to like do what he wanted. So, but I mean, it was, it was great. It was exhausting, of course, yeah. like, and stressful, but like, I just try to remind myself it's like not like two years later, I really only had like this aha moment. We were in Madison square garden and I, I made like the show intro. So like when like my family came to the show, like I hadn't seen them in like forever because I was so busy touring. I got to bring my like whole family to the show and they were in the crowd and like the lights go like 
turn off. It's completely dark. You hear like the band start to play. And the first thing you see is like a video on the screen. It's like a video that I made. And that was like the first moment in like two years where I got to like, be like, Oh shit, this is like, this is really cool. Like I'm in Madison square garden where I've like, I've always dreamt Mm -hmm. of like where I've used to dream of seeing artists and stuff. And it's like, my work is being played right now. And it's like, I really hadn't had like a self-reflecting moment like up to that point. So yeah, even now I just try to take moments to just like be like, this is cool. I live in Los Angeles, a place mm-hmm. I've always wanted to live. I get to meet really cool people, but you can get so caught up in everything that like you don't get to have those type of moments. So I'm glad it happened when I'm so young. Like Matt Damon mm-hmm. tells a story about him winning the Oscars when he was so young. And like afterwards he didn't go to like an after party. He went home and he said he just like cried holding the Oscar. And he was just like, he had this moment where he realized that like he's so thankful he gets to realize that if this was something that he was like striving towards and he's like 80 years old and he finally wins an Oscar, he to realize that like this won't make you happy. He's like, he felt so blessed in that moment to realize that like at 20, whatever, that he mm-hmm. got to realize that there's so much more to life than just like accolades and money and stuff. So I kind of feel like I had a similar experience luckily where it's like, okay, that's not going to make me happy. So like now everything I do is just like, I want to make art that I could be proud of. And what did that moment feel like in Madison square garden with your family there seeing all your work of usher on the big screen? I mean, yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of like an outer body experience because I had just, you know, when day to day life passes so fast for you that like, oftentimes we don't, you know, it's like when it's your birthday and someone goes like, Oh, how do you, how do you feel? Like, do you feel Mm -hmm. any older? It's like, I feel the same as yesterday. Cause like in comparison, you don't really get to like, But in that moment, I got to actually have like a reflective moment and like think back of like, oh, two, like a year or two ago, I was like in school and I was working at Best Buy and I was like dreaming of just like not living where I'm living and and just doing more and just like, and now I'm here and it's like people are cheering and it's like Mm -hmm. I'm literally living a dream. So that, yeah, just it felt like an outer body experience almost. And it was like, it was like, it was overwhelming, but it was. It was great because it's it reminded me that I need to do that more like every day, like take a moment to be like, I d- dreamt of being where I am right now. Because mm-hmm. like you can get so caught up in like the minutia of life that you forget like, yeah, I dreamt of being where yeah. I am right now. So let me be happy about it. You talk about you see the accolades and stuff, but then behind the scenes, you see that it doesn't really make you happy. I'm mm-hmm. sure there's been moments where you were there when in Usher's life or in Justin Bieber's life where they were going through some stuff. Is that a moment that they tell you to put the camera down? Or are you supposed to capture that for in case there is a documentary? I guess it's different on like the circumstance. Like if you're filming for a doc, I'm sure like, yeah, shoot everything. And then like, just they trust you to like, you know, there's yeah. going to be a, a, you know, you'll go through the edit together and just like, if you need to cut certain things, but it's like, I've always had a good, awareness of like what should be filmed and what like shouldn't like if it it is a super personal moment or he's like with his kids or like they're like having a disagreement or something it's like you don't need to film everything but like um yeah it was different because it was unique even when I was with ushers because like we weren't filming for something specific as a as much as we were just like he lives a really awesome life and they they knew they wanted stuff captured for you know for just emotional sake or just for Mm -hmm. like for the future to have so and it like it comes full circle if it's like he's like performs at the super bowl it's like oh wait you have footage of when we were rehearsing or doing this or you have footage like i get like even though i'm not still touring with them now i'll still get texts randomly just being like oh do you have like this moment and it's like i i've i also just have like ocd so i'm like super organized so it's like it's easy for me to like go back and find and pull stuff but um yeah, I mean, when life is kind of unfolding, you just do your best judgment to like, because you also have to have a goal in mind is like, what what are you trying to show? Like, you obviously want to show that his, like his, you want to show the realness of life, but also like make it seem like, you know, the beauty of life. So it's like, if the goal is just, to, I'm, I'm not like TMZ, I'm not like yeah, trying yeah. to just film all the shitty moments, you know <laughs> what I mean? So it's like, yeah, show the real moments, but also like find how there's beauty in it too. But yeah, for anyone who wants to be a videographer or just capture stuff like that, it's like having a good sense of judgment of like, yeah, what you're filming and why you're filming it like definitely helps a lot. Behind the scenes, like how is Usher? 
Because he has this star power, this, I'm sure, you know, it's performative. Mm -hmm. What is he like, cameras off, sitting on the couch at home? He's like surprisingly just like normal, but like, mm -hmm. I don't know. He, I think he even said this, that like the age you become famous is like kind of the age you stay at forever. And it's like he, him, Justin, like there's a handful of people that like, I think he did Atlanta star search when he was like 16 or something. So like at heart, he's like a 16 year old, you know what I mean? Like he obviously has like power and stuff. So you can obviously, you know, there, there's moments where, where, where anyone else where like, you can get like caught up and like have like a, a power trip. Cause it's like, you, people don't really say no to you, but like at the same time, it's like, I think the reason why we got along so well is because he is a kid. Like we would mm -hmm. go to a new city or something and we'd want to just go and see the coolest stuff there was like go to like trampoline parks or go skydiving or whatever. And like, if there was, you know, at the time I remember we were in like Morocco and the, the viral thing on vine was like, I remember like, I like turtles. Yeah, yeah. Like we went to like, um, a market and there's just a box of turtles and like, I was just filming and he was like holding a turtle and he was like talking to the guy and, and he felt me with the camera there and he just looked over at me and he goes, I like turtles. <laughs> <laughs> like he, He's just like, he's like a kid and he just like, we would do sketches on tour where he'd have like a gold segue and he'd carry around like an E.T. doll and we reshot like the E.T. chase scene. Yeah. So it was, it was fun because it like, it made me feel like I was still in school with my friends just being like, what funny thing can we shoot? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or like what cool thing we can, and he was always like, he just wanted to like see the coolest stuff, do the coolest stuff. And just like, he wanted the vibes to be good. And obviously like, yeah, there's moments where you got to remind yourself and like, or you are reminded it's like, oh, this is a job and like you have a job mm -hmm. to do and all of that. But it's great because it's like, you know, even when you're on like a set later in life, you realize that everyone has a role to play and everyone's doing something. Yeah. But like, I think the reason why we got along so well was because he is a kid at heart. And even like with Justin, it's the same thing. And I think the reason people are finally now starting to see, they're like, oh, we kind of, we did him dirty. Like he's this, this kid, we like put him on a pedestal, then we judged him. Then we like, imagine being like having $200 million at the, like yeah. when you're a teenager and having, you know what I mean? And it's like, mm -hmm that's not good for anyone's mental health. So I think, yeah, at, at heart, everyone just wants to be a kid and they'll test their limits and stuff. But it's like, no, uh, luckily, yeah, they're both like super kind, which is like a reason why we were able to like get along and work together and stuff. So I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, when you get famous, you stay for the rest of your life at the age you get famous. Mm. I mean, you look at Guns N' Roses, they still wear the same outfits, like yeah. they're still like Kiss or whatever, they still wear the same outfits, they stick to that age. Why do you think that is? To some degree you you're like your adult your adolescence gets taken away that you don't get to like really grow anymore because you also like you're surrounded by people that won't tell you no necessarily either. So it's like if you're a kid and you go to like take a cookie or something and you have your parent there to be like, no, like you can't have that before dinner or like, you know what I mean? You yeah. get, you get, you like, you learn like what you can do, what you, you know, but it's like, if all of a sudden you reach like this level of famous stuff, the people that start surrounding you are just people that want to like be around you for your money or your fame or just, or won't mm -hmm. say like, we'll just appease whatever whim you have because they want to stay in your inner circle. So I think that has a lot to do with it too. It's like, if you want to just speed around in a Lamborghini, like who's really going to stop you. So mm -hmm. it's like, you then have to have your own kind of self like awareness of that. But I think it's a, it's a, it can be a pro and a con. Like the con can be that like, yeah, you don't, maybe you don't mature. Or like you have to mm -hmm. learn on your own, like what's, socially acceptable or not <laughs> but then the pro is also that you have like whatever that magical essence is that like makes you artistic like that's now your driving force like you get to just be like i want to shoot a video of me being a mermaid doing this thing like whatever you are whoever you are and you like have that like idea all of a sudden it's like yeah that's a profession yeah totally like we're going to spend millions of dollars to execute that vision because you you know you have a, a group of like fans or audience or whatever that is like supporting you in that so yeah the most creative people are like the people that keep that kind of like childhood energy mm -hmm. there so yeah i think if you become in the public eye and you kind of get that green light of like we like you then like mentally you stay at that kind of place for you know for a while what was it like for you creatively going from working for usher 
to moving to Los Angeles at 1600 Vine and then being thrown into, now you're filming six second videos for Rudy Mancuso, Amanda Cerny, all these people, the whole shot studio. Yeah. What did that feel like for you creatively to go from like this big stage to six seconds? It was like, it was weirdly fun because it felt like I was regressing to like high school and college again because I'd been... I'd been in that like world of making longer things like shooting mm -hmm. for docs and doing music videos and whatnot. So it was like really fun. And I think even for like the people that like the shots, people that I was doing stuff with, it was like they saw what I was making and like, they were like, Oh, we want stuff like that. And for me it was like, Oh, that's easy. Like I've been trying to, I've been making like 10 minute things. Like I'd yeah. love to make a six second thing. That'd be <laughs> super fun. And also the energy was cool too because you know how it was. It's like we'd all be like hanging out and someone would make like a joke or say like a phrase or something. You'd be like, oh, that's a bit. Let's do that now. And like that, like they, you know, even like Batch will still do that. We'll be sitting somewhere. Yeah. And like the first time he saw my new place, my house, he went to open the door and he, he like complimented something and I was like, oh yeah, that's like, um, he's like, is this really signed by Michael Jordan? And I'm like, yeah, and he is. And he's like, he's like, what time you go to sleep? I'll be back at midnight. And, he, <laughs> and he'd like make a joke, like he's going to come back and steal it. And he'd be like, oh, let's shoot that. And he'd went back outside and we like just film like, like as if I was giving yeah. him a house tour. And it's just like, it was fun because it just, yeah, nothing again, it was like, like childhood mentality. Like nothing was off limits. If you had an idea, like we all try to figure out how to like support and run with it. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I liked it. I also felt like I needed it because I was in as much fun as it was touring and doing all that stuff. It's like I needed that kind of like recharge period of just shooting with like d different people and just shooting stuff that I, you know, there wasn't that pressure of like mm -hmm. where it was going to go or what was going to happen with it. And it was just like everyone was just shooting just for like fun. What? Yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was fun. You kind of re- humbled yourself if you will when you started doing that because you go from working for usher making a ton of money for him then you moved to 1600 vine and you started shooting just for fun mm -hmm. again like yeah. you weren't getting paid was that hard for you to like do or you like how did you get, re get that hunger again as like this established videographer um again it's like it's i love making stuff so like for me i never really thought i mean i definitely butt heads with people at a certain point yeah. where i'm just like guys i get paid to do this like i can't like just shoot your merch thing for, yeah. like right now for no reason like you know you kind of you lay ground rules down or you push back if like if you need to and just let know people what you're comfortable with um but no, I mean, I, I just, I love making stuff in general. So like, it was always kind of an afterthought of like, what am I going to get from this? And then, you know, obviously everything kind of like fell to pieces later on because like everyone mentally started to be like, what am I getting from this? Like what group yeah, am, yeah. am I with? Am I team 10? Am I this? Am I, am I whatever? And like, it started to divide up a little bit, but, um, I feel like I was always kind of like a weird I was like Switzerland in a way where it's like I was friends with everyone and I didn't mind shooting with everyone and I didn't mind hanging with everyone because like at the heart of it, all I really cared about your fridge is having an orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> <What the fuck>? <laughs> <laughs> My fridge um, is going crazy right now. Yeah. I don't know if the mic's picking that up, yeah. but it's, it's having a baby. Um, but no, I, I just, I just enjoy making stuff. So like the first day I, that like same day I moved in and I saw you, I think I bumped into at people at the pool and I bumped and like, it was like Jeff Wittick and Rudy and they were like, Oh, let's shoot like a fight sketch right now. Cause they like knew I knew how to film. And mm -hmm. like, I just shot like a sketch like that day. And it was just like every day. And then you, you figure out as you go along, like, okay, yeah. How do I continue to sustain myself doing this? And that's where like shots came into play. It's like at the time it was just an app and then they, like Johnny and Sammy brought me on to be like creative director. And then I ended up like helping transition it from like an app to a studio because they were like, Oh, this is like, there, there can be money in this. Like we can mm -hmm. tie brands into this and we can like, you know what I mean? Like YouTube's the future, making longer stuff. Like they, they can't live on vine forever. So, you know, you find a way to like sustain it and make it like a business and whatever. But like that was never in the forefront of like my thinking. My thinking was always like, I, yeah, I want to like be making funny stuff and I want to be hanging out with like them. Cause it was like, yeah. it, it felt, yeah, I had my college experience and I felt like no one else there had a college experience. So it was just like, it was just cool being around that energy again, where I just felt like, oh, we're a bunch of, it felt like a, it felt like dorm. a dorm room. Yeah. yeah it literally. felt like a dorm. So.
So it's, for those of you guys that don't know what Shots is, Shots was an app by John and Sammy Shahidi, mm-hmm. which was tied to Justin Bieber. And the whole thing around it was like no captions or something, no bull- or no comments. It was supposed to be an anti-bullying yeah, anti- thing because, yeah, so there was like, you don't see the like count, you don't see yeah. the, the comments, so you could just post to post. And you couldn't, up at the time, you couldn't upload any stuff from your camera roll. So it was, it was like almost Shot like be, app, it was yeah. like be real before be real. Right. Like, like you just, yeah, you take a selfie or whatever. And um, yeah. And then it ended up, you know, I was, I was spending like two or three days a week in San Francisco because John and Sam weren't even like, they had a place in 1600 Vine, but that's like not where their focus was. They were yeah. focused and they had built like Mike Tyson's like fight night, um, that like the game for, for him. And that's how like, obviously like, Tyson got introduced to mm-hmm. like that whole circle of everyone. It's funny now because Logan's boxing or, yeah, yeah. or Jake's, Jake's boxing, boxing him. And that's Tyson. how that whole connection happened too. But, um, and then yeah, Justin and he, they made like mon- uh, the money team for like uh, Floyd Mayweather. So they were like in that like boxing space. And, but yeah, I mean, I came on cause I was doing Rudy's awkward puppets for him. Mm-hmm. And like shots ended up becoming like a management company and they still kind of are like with the Nelk boys. And I think they still help Rudy and stuff, but, um, they were just like, well, why don't you come and be a part of shots? And you could be like a, the creative director and we could think of a way of how to like expand on like this app and this plat. And it ended up like transitioning to like a studio. Cause they realized yeah. that like, they're not going to, the, sh- the app was never going to fully compete with like Instagram and like mm-hmm. Snapchat and all that, that, that stuff. So yeah, it became like a, a place to like sign creators and then help them make content for their YouTube channel and stuff. So it ended, ended up like bringing on like Lele and Anwar and like there was a whole roster of talent. Um, yeah, what happened? So, why did it, why did shots stop? Why did everybody stop making skits and stuff? I think it, the pandemic kind of yeah. shut it down. I think because everyone like what happened at a certain point was at one point it was just me shooting everyone. And I like I stopped after a year just because like I was still working with Usher and I was just like, this is a, I can't like mm-hmm. take on this frequency by myself. Um and then it became everyone had like their own little like isolated teams. Like everyone would have a shooter that they worked with and an editor that they worked with. And I think eventually when the pandemic happened, it's like productions in general shut down. So like they refocused and I think they just re shifted to becoming just like a management company. And I think mm-hmm. that a lot of their energy and attention went to, yeah, <clears throat> the Nelk boys. And they were always good at making brands. So I think like Happy Dad was like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the I mean, focus. yeah, they crush it with the brands. Yeah. How did you get introduced to Justin Bieber? Initially, Usher. Um, that same first week I was working with him, uh, Bieber came to see that show, for a Bruta, so I, I met him there. And then, like, two days later, Usher went into the studio, because if you guys don't know, like, Usher, like, co-signed Justin with mm-hmm. um, L.A. Reid. Um, so he was always, like, a mentor. So, like, their, their kind of professional careers, like, very much like overlapping so we cross paths a bunch because of that um but yeah usher went into the recording studio to do beauty and the beat because initially he was gonna be the feature instead of Nicki minaj um so i I met him through there and then yeah we just like random things like billboard awards we'd share like a green room like usher's camp and justin's camp and then i really became friendly with justin though from 1600 vine because he like you know, John had his own relationship with Justin, obviously, like, because he invested in shots and stuff. But then also he was friendly with, like, Rudy and Christian. And 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 so I got to, like, you know, it was cool, too, because, like, I feel like Justin kind of looked at me as, like, I don't want to say, like, an older brother figure, but, like, he always associated me with Usher in the camp. So, like, I think there was a trust factor there. And then once I was, like, you know, friendly and hanging out with, like, Rudy and everyone else it was just like oh now we can just like you know it's it's not there's nothing work related we get to just hang out and be friends so yeah through that and then one of my best friends is Nick DeMora who's also Mm -hmm. um Bieber's was the backup dancer then choreographer and now creative director so like there so whenever anything work related came up with Justin that like Nick thought I could tap into he'd reach out to me and I'd like would help with like music videos or whatever it may be he'd he'd bring me in so yeah we just stayed we stayed in touch through like all of that so there was like a couple touch points of connections there so you said you met Bieber before the whole tattoo like just got his body covered super quick what was it like witnessing that in real time 
Was it like a difficult time for him or what? Yeah, I mean, it was strange. Obviously, he was dealing with a lot. Like mm-hmm. the the public eye was like he was under a microscope. And like, it's weird. America, I always say they like we love like prodigies. Like our number mm-hmm. one export is just like celebrities. It's, yeah. so, it's so strange. We try to find like the, the best young talent and then we like just ruin them. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, we idolize them. We love to build them up and then want to watch them fall. It's so mm-hmm. strange. And then we want to judge them. But um, yeah, it was, it, it was interesting too. Cause I would see him like, it was almost like I'd see him at like different chapters. I'd see him at different like bookmarks. Cause it's like, I wasn't seeing him every single day. So I'd, I'd, you know, I'd see him when he had no tattoos and a bowl cut. And then I see him fully like tattooed up and like, or like, so, like I see him like every three months or so. Um, so I don't know. I mean, we've had really good talks and like, I think he's always someone who just wanted to just be happy yeah. so I think he would always just try to find like different groups of people he'd hang out with and different things that, at different outlets he could he could express himself in and yeah I mean he seems in a better place now which I'm I'm grateful for but yeah it, it was yeah that was another self-reflecting moment where it's just like seeing that like obviously he had money he had fame he had all this stuff and like you know and he was like not liking life at all mm-hmm. because of you know he felt like he was in a cage it was yeah. tough yeah I met him at a 1600 Vine at Johnny's house one time. Yeah. That was such a crazy place to live because like Mm -hmm. I would, we lived in apartment 850. I think Johnny, what, I don't know what his number was, but he was like two doors down. Mm -hmm. And one day I'm just walking out and I get in the elevator and freaking Kendall Jenner and Justin Bieber walk out of the elevator. I'm like, what the fuck is this place, bro? Yeah. I was like 21. I just moved to LA. Um, But Yeah. yeah, I met just, I went to his like 21st or 22nd birthday party. And that was when I first moved out to LA. So that was like when he was younger and like partying and whatnot, but I never Mm -hmm. really got to like have a conversation with him. But yeah, it seems like he's really turned things around. Yeah. I mean, he's obviously married now and he's like, his attention and focus is like even is it's either recharging and working on art or it's like focusing on like his family and his like, and Drew house and, and Mm -hmm. I mean, he loves hockey and stuff. So I think, I don't, I don't think people realize how important recharging is because yeah. it's like, you can't, you can't be creative and you can't be sustained unless you have those like recharge periods or whether it is like every day taking time for yourself to recharge and de, de like attach and deconnect from stuff or like taking longer periods. Like, especially if you're like in the public eye for so long and you feel like you have you know, obligations and, or you're not surrounded by like the right people that are like fueling you in the right way. It could be so draining. So it's like, you know, if people need like a year or two years, whatever to like, just recharge. They got to give the kid a break. I mean, he's been working his ass off since he was like 14 years old. Yeah. And then they get upset where it's like, come on, man. Like, dude, this guy's been going hard. Yeah. No one knows. He, he missed anyone his anything. whole, yeah. Teenage years because he was working. Yeah. Um, so you, helped film and edit the yummy music video yeah i did the the a couple of dance videos for his um nick my buddy nick demore that i was mentioning he got tasked with making a like a dance music video for every song on i think it was the changes album Mm -hmm. so he brought me in to do a, a few of them so we got to do like the changes video together the yummy video together um and then, yeah, and then uh, he did, like, a remix of Essence with WizKid. We had, like, 24 hours to put, like, that music video together. We just, like, rented a house and filmed on the beach in Malibu and stuff. So, yeah, it was, it's it's fun. It's cool that your friends are, like, if they're doing cool mm-hmm. stuff, you somehow get tapped into doing other really cool stuff. It's, like, I've been in, yeah, fortunate situations. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask because you helped kind of co-direct the Yummy music video. You helped edit it. There's some conspiracies online about this video. And since you were part of the project, <laughs> the are answer. they true? I didn't do the music. I did the, oh. d- the dance oh, okay. the dance video. I thought I saw your credits on the music video. No, you mean the one where he, it's like the, the pizza, the eating and all that yeah, stuff yeah. and how people are talking, how it's like has to do with children and yeah, shit. Yeah, like, pizza no, game. I had nothing to do with, with that video. I had to do, um, it was like a, it was a dance video for the, the remix of the summer Walker song. Um, no, but yeah, I can't comment on that video. I have no idea what the you intention don't know, was. You don't or... want to comment. <laughs> no, I don't. I've I've seen it once. I've not. Because I think no Nick idea. didn't he direct it? I mean, he's 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 Justin's creative director, yeah. so I think he anything that Justin's doing, he's 
involved with. I think he just helps him with the movement in general. So, um, yeah. But no, I mean, I don't know what that vision was. I have no, yeah. no idea. Maybe it has to do with Haley's Erewhon smoothie. Yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, speaking of music videos, you filmed, directed, edited, and starred in mm -hmm. the most viewed lyric video on YouTube. Three billion views. Chain Smokers Closer. How did you get that? It was initially, I was just making videos for Instagram and my YouTube and I was just filming me and my girlfriend at the time going to like Malibu and just doing different things. And I was friends with Rory Kramer who was touring and filming with the chain smokers. And he was tasked to put a video together for their new single, which was closer. Um, and he had a weekend to put it together. So he was, just, he saw my videos that I had already made of like going to Laguna beach and Malibu of mm -hmm. like me and Alyssa at the time. And he was just like, can I use those edits and that? And like, and we'll like rent a Range Rover. Cause like one of the lyrics is in the backseat mm -hmm. of your Rover. And we'll just get some like drone shots and like spend half a day in Malibu doing that. And I was like, yeah. And like, I didn't think the song would like, I didn't, I didn't know what was the song was going to be. I've been, I've been involved with music videos that like go nowhere and music videos that like are seen by a lot of people. Um, and then, yeah, we just spent the like weekend. I gave him all the footage and stuff that I had already shot. He threw, he like hand wrote like the lyrics on top. I colored the video, like pieced everything together from like what I had already shot and mixed with the new stuff. And yeah, it was like 48 hours later. He's like, okay, it's at the label. It's done. And I'm like, cool. And I just like out of sight, out of mind. And then like, yeah, Closer became like the song of the summer and every, yeah. it was just like everywhere. And it was funny because that was the only piece of content they had for it too. And like once it hit yeah. like a billion views, they were like, oh, maybe we should shoot like an official music <laughs> video. But it, yeah, at that point it was already like yeah. wildfire. So like, to yeah, it just keeps like adding. And it's funny because like I'll get like, I don't really stay in touch with a lot of people from high school, but the thing I get messaged the most is they'll be in like a bar and like that, you know, like anytime the song's playing on, like it'll be like a YouTube playlist and like that's the video that goes along with the song. So they're like, oh, look, you're playing in the bar or, <laughs> or, or look, you're like here. And I'm just like, it's so funny. I remember even like Logan, I was like walking outside 1600 Vine and he was vlogging the, in the vlogging days and he was just like, hey, you're the guy from the Closer video. And he was like filming me outside the window. It's just like... I actually, I introed Logan to the Chainsmokers. I brought him to the Chainsmokers show and he got to meet, like, I have a photo of, like, me, um, Alex, Drew, and, like, Logan had, the, like, the long hair, yeah, the, the, mop the, the mop head. Um, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it, th those, usually the best things are things you don't pre-plan for. Like, it's not like, I didn't film for the intention of it being a closer video, but it was just, like, I was just filming content already and making, like, you know, lifestyle edits and Rory is like, hey, can we like, I have 48 hours to put a lyric video together. Can I use <laughs> this stuff? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it all came to be. But yeah, I mean, it's cool that the song was so popular and like that piece of content is like directly linked to it. So did you get paid for it? No, I didn't even, I didn't even ask. I just like, can you just put, just like say it's starring Taylor Cut Films in the, in the description. Three billion views and didn't make a dollar. I know people always ask, <laughs> they ask me, they're like, do you get any of that ad revenue? I'm like, no. I'm like, what actor gets ad revenue yeah. from? Um, no. I mean, that'd be nice. But no, I mean, again, I, 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 I did, didn't do a lot of things for money. I would just do it because I was just like, yeah, it'd be cool to be associated mm -hmm. with it. Or like I already shot stuff. So why not? Like, yeah, you can use it. Why not? What did that feel like when it was just like going crazy viral? It was funny. Were you getting recognized a lot? Yeah. Or I'd get a lot like, Oh, where do I know you from? Yeah. I get that a ton. And I'm like, you probably just like put me on in the background of your pregame. That's, like, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's where you, that's where you know me from. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was, it was cool. It was, it, was, it wasn't like, it wasn't life changing, but it was just like a really fun thing to like be like, Oh yeah, I was in that video. So yeah. What made you get into getting in front of the camera? Because you first started being behind the camera and then you kind of started to put yourself on camera. What made you make that shift? I think I just wanted to like, I don't know, have my own brand a bit too, because like, yeah, I was filming for different people for so long. It was, it was, it'd be nice to like, I think I mentally was just like, it'd be nice to, I don't know, for people. To, and I, I always got comments like, oh, you're funny. Like, I didn't know you were funny <laughs> or I didn't know, like, like no one knew what I was like. And I was like, all right, maybe I'll show my personality a bit or, um, yeah. 
And I mean, it did, it did like, I liked vlogging for a bit and I liked being in front of the camera. And also like, sometimes it's a necessity. Like if you don't have another person and you want to like tell a story, it's like, whatever, I'll put a tripod there and I can Mm -hmm. like talk or I can act in it or whatever. Did you enjoy vlogging or did you just do it because it was popular? No, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed like, I'm, I, I think I'm like pretty witty and like fast thinking. So it was like fun, like being around people and then like interacting off of them and mm-hmm. like coming up with bits. And like, we were both similar in our vlog style where we'd cut away to like, you know, if it was like, oh, hi, Mark, you'd cut away to yeah. hi, Mark. Or yeah. like if something you'd be like, what are you doing? You like cut away, like my brain. Yeah. yeah. My brain would always think of like, if I hear something, I'll associate with something. So it was just fun kind of like riffing off of that and um no I I enjoyed it for a bit and then it again I needed a recharge period like anyone else does I was just like all right I don't because there's moments where it's like even even doing this it's like our speaking voice versus like when you're like okay okay we're about to start rolling what's up guys welcome back it's like I'd like at a certain point I was just like I don't want to have to yeah do that or I don't have to like charge myself up to like do that um (laughs) So yeah, I kind of, and I'll, and there's some times too where it's like, I like telling stories sometimes where it's like, I don't need to be in it and there doesn't need to be dialogue and I could just like set a vibe and I could just like add music to it and like go back to my roots of like how I used to like telling stuff. But no, and I mean, I feel like I'm finding the love of being in front of the camera again now because I'm also just like more comfortable with like knowing like I don't have to mm-hmm. perform or whatever. I can just like be me and if like people don't like it oh well but um yeah vlogging's it's fun but it's also it's like once it becomes too over anything becomes too oversaturated it's like i inherently want to figure out another way of doing stuff so it's like it was fun for a bit but i'm like all right how can i tell stories now where it doesn't have to be me holding something like this you know was it challenging for you because you kind of with that closer video and with your youtube channel you were kind of in this relationship goals niche Mm -hmm. was it challenging for you after you guys broke up to refine like what your creative flow was no i mean it it was hard in terms of like definitely dating moving forward i was definitely like more cognizant of like i don't need to put everything out there you know like i don't need to like (laughs) same yeah like one i don't like yeah my my goal too was never like my identity was going to be like a travel couple like it wasn't like i was thinking that like this would would be my niche this would be my thing it was just more so like i was so used to just filming what was in my vicinity of life whether it was like filming like my friends i was hanging out with shooting sketches or if it was like you know and it and it's for me too it's like when i was traveling it's like if i'm dating somewhere or or like whatever it's like i like filming them they're they're my muse and i get to use them as like a way to make art But no, it's like when the breakup happened, like I like luckily 70% of the stuff that I make is like I'm not forward facing anyway. So it's like I was still making music videos. I was still working on stuff that like didn't involve me um, being in front of the camera. But no, I think it was it was it's just a nice life lesson too. now. It's like because I'm in a public relationship now and like everything is great and she's like a creator herself but we both don't find the need for having to like you know it's not if you look at our pages it's not like we're not all over like it's not like that's what our identity is but I think it's it's healthy to realize that you know as long as you're happy behind closed doors like you don't have to you don't have to give too much to the world unless it's like something you want to share and the reason why you're sharing it is because you're proud of it and it makes you happy and you don't care about what how people are going to perceive it but that's the thing too like when i got started there was no such thing as like niches like no one was talking about that stuff so i was like i didn't like try to throw myself into this niche i was like oh this works and i'm just gonna do it and then it kind of like became a niche yeah and yeah yeah now i mean now you 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 could tell now too where it's like it becomes people's identities like you'll have yeah, you'll have people that are like, oh, we're a family page or like we're like a couple that dances or we're like, the, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. a lot of people, they'll lean into, yeah, whatever they think that category is. But um, I don't know. I just like so many different forms of storytelling that it's like it's really hard for me to like feel like I'm, I want to do a niche or like be in a niche. Like I just I feel like instinctually, instinctually like want to like. Because when someone would be like, oh, you're a travel influencer, I feel like everything in me would be like, all right, now I'm just going to make like 
music videos or now yeah. I'm just going to do like, or just find other ways of doing things. Cause I know it probably won't be great for engagement or whatever. Cause yeah. like everyone loves consistency. Everyone like loves putting people into a box, you know, like you, we're, we're self-aware and smart enough to, to know that like, all right, I can probably get good engagement if I just like really leaned into this thing. That's like, yeah. that m- makes people feel comfortable that they like or whatever. But I don't know. I know I was never really in it for that in the first yeah. place, but I mean, I'm glad people liked it and I'm glad it like I, the thing that makes me the happiest now is like weirdly people will come up to me. And they're like, Oh, I learned how to like export for Instagram from your thing. <laughs> or like, I like you were my inspiration to buy a camera or like yeah. that makes me super happy. Cause like I, I made myself make a new YouTube video every Sunday, like just to give myself a goal at a certain point. Mm-hmm. And obviously I couldn't make like a, epic travel montage every single time so in the interims i would do like tutorials and this was like this was before people were pushing courses and it was almost like it was gatekeeping at that point like people wouldn't tell their secrets they wouldn't say how they color graded they wouldn't whatever and they definitely wouldn't tell stuff for free because they Mm -hmm. like later down the line everyone's like you're not i'll tell you what how i color grade if you buy my lut for 999 dollars a month um but yeah, I would just like, as a way of doing so, I'd be like, okay, let me like just make a tutorial. And like, I would do like how to export for Instagram or so or like how to, it was, people didn't know how to export like vertical, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So like, I would just do random things like that. Is, that. is that boring to you though? Making something like that? I mean, now I feel like everyone has talked about everything you could possibly talk yeah. about. So like, I don't really do it that much. I, Cause even, like people ask me all the time, they're like, dude, do a tutorial on this yeah. or your camera or this. And I'm like, I just it's think there's on a, the internet. Yeah. There's like, people doing it so good now that it's like I don't feel like I'll try to add value where I feel like value could be added and Mm -hmm. that's why I did it at a certain point but it makes me stoked because like you know Johnny FPV who's like I love his content he's awesome he's crazy the first time I met him he was like dude I still like use your preset to export for like Instagram or whatever he (laughs) like did like because I made like a little thing you could drop in your timeline that would just reformat your sequence to be like four by five or something I'm sure he doesn't use anymore because no one posts four by five but um he was like yeah that's how for the longest he would export like for vert and like I did, I made that tutorial because like I would get those comments on like Instagram or whatever. And also I didn't see it anywhere. So I was mm-hmm. just like, all right, let me just like, that could be my video this Sunday. It's so funny. Cause sometimes I forget how much I know. Yeah. And like we're sitting here talking about like four by five Apple ProRes 422, mm-hmm. but like maybe I should start making some videos to teach people what I know. Yeah. Cause also <laughs> now a lot of people, they get caught in their, everyone's kind of caught in their own algorithm. You know what I mean? So it's like, even if there is like, we might be aware of like that, like so-and-so has done a tutorial on something or like we might be aware of where to get the information for a lot of people. Like I, yeah, a lot of people might not be like, how do you add these captions or how do you do this or whatever? So it's like, yeah, if, if you have the energy and it makes you happy and you want to like inform people through that medium of a tutorial, then yeah. Totally. But I just, I don't know. I don't know if I want to, I still get questions now of people like someone's like, Hey, or I'll get cold emails of like, you could earn X amount a month if you made a tutorial. I'm like, I did that in 2016. I'm not yeah. about to like come back out with like a masterclass. Why not? Cause I don't, I, I'll, I'll rather do a podcast or rather just respond to someone's comment because like, I don't want to feel like I'm trying to sell people anything anymore. So I'd rather like that's, so, that's something I, but that is the business side of it. But that's yeah. something I always struggled with when I started. Like everybody was selling merch mm. and I just felt so guilty knowing the cost of the good mm-hmm. and then how much we were selling it for. I was like, dude, this is ridiculous. Like yeah. I'm selling this t-shirt for $40 and it costs like $7 to make it. Yeah. But that's like, I mean, that's how Nike becomes Nike. Like the cost is like. What I like now is like the people like Emma Chamberlain who like pivoted to like making a really cool coffee brand mm-hmm. or like I think there's a way of doing it if it's like if you're going to form like a, a brand that you're passionate about and that you really like then yeah I'm all for that but just making a new revenue stream or a new you know what I mean like that j- just for the sake of having like a new revenue stream like I don't know there's other ways to make money. Let's talk about gear for a little bit what do you edit on? I still use Premiere. Um, I have DaVinci, although I don't use it as often as I do Premiere. Um, just because I saw Sam Coulter, he completely switched his workflow to DaVinci. He has, yeah. Why? Is he getting paid? Mm, I don't think so. 
maybe. <laughs> um, no, I know, I know Adobe was paying him for a bit, so he might have ruin that relationship to be honest but no he makes enough off of his courses they, they <laughs> might be like a co-sponsor or something for like certain activations yeah. but um no i think for him it was like it premiere was crashing a lot sometimes mm. it doesn't play well with plugins it doesn't really do great sometimes if like apple has a new yeah operating yeah. system then it inevitably takes premiere like a month to like kind of catch up um I think he likes that you can color and everything like, like, you know, there's different tabs to like do the different things, whether it's VFX or sound mixing or whatever, all in there. So I think he found a good workflow for him. I've in a weird way figured out like workarounds for all the, like the things. Yeah. And, and I like now that Adobe's implementing a lot of cool things like you know adobe podcast was its own like yeah, website yeah, and now yeah. it's like you can en enhance speech directly in essential sound so like you know if you wanted to on this you can or if we were shooting on like a lav mic or something that isn't yeah. professional we can now use that to like clean up the audio and like eventually firefly is going to have like ai incorporated where you can like rotoscope and change things kind of like generative fill does in photoshop sorry guys camera died ran out of battery Anyway, we were talking about the very exciting topic of editing softwares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I just, I figured out workarounds in Premiere and I have all my like presets and everything. So like for me, I just don't want to take the time to like learn a new editing software. And I think Adobe is like doing it right where they're going to start incorporating some of these cool features and AI things that like will, will give it that added value. Um, Do you still like to learn or yeah. do you think you've capped no 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 i love i mean my youtube is like just listening to podcasts or watching gear reviews or yeah yeah keeping up with what the new updates and stuff are yeah i i love i love learning e even if it's not strictly video and photo related like i yeah learning new subjects or um like I, i'm getting into like music production and just like photography like I'll, I'll constantly just try to pivot into like something a new art form and figure out how to do it really well like i'll get in, enthralled in like lighting all of a sudden and be like okay like how do i like what softbox should i get or dude like, i yeah i can never figure out lighting i need yeah. your help because i don't know what the hell i'm doing here yeah i got you i mean i watch a bunch of tutorials too about like i just don't understand it it's like you're supposed to like i saw a podcast that had this light so then i got it and there then i'm you like go. But I mean, I'm trying to learn, you know, you got the, the light back there. The, what's it called? The room or the, what is it? When you put a light behind someone that's like in the distance, what's that called again? Oh yeah. I mean, you could either like a practical or practical. Like, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 It's cool. I mean, I, I love it. it and again too, it's like if there's subjects that I feel like aren't my strongest, I'll try to figure out a way how to be better at it. Even like sound, you know, it's like when you get into podcasting or making music or whatever, you, you research like, all right, this, why is the Shure SM7B the best for live yeah. music and podcasting? And like what, I like just bought new sound mixing headphones and it's just like, yeah, I'm, I may have a slight shopping addiction, but I also <laughs> just like, I like getting things that are going to like fuel yeah, my yeah. creative process. I think me, me and you are the same. I've never been one to like love luxury items. I mm. spend all my money on like cameras and yeah. computers and like, equipment i don't know what it is like that's yeah. my addiction yeah because hopefully it, it it will fuel your creative process right. so like you feel like you're investing in yourself i also too i'm like i'm getting really big into like my recharging now is like the like being physically healthy and stuff so like i i bought like a sauna for my house and i have like a cold plunge and everyone's like, doing that now yeah i mean <laughs> i yeah i i mean i've i've always loved like the hot cold therapy um but even like uh, I play basketball, I play soccer now, so I'll get like new basketball shoes or yeah, like yeah. new soccer things or like compression shorts so my knees don't hurt or like, I don't know. That's like where I invest that's my money. The, that's the funny thing, guys, because a lot of you probably don't know, amazing basketball player. This oh, dude thanks. got the handles, got the jump <laughs> shot. I'll give you B-roll for this. Do you have some? Yeah, I got great B-roll. And it's funny because like most like tech people, you're like, oh, tech nerd, like they stay yeah. inside, they don't leave their computer, but you're pretty active. What got you into basketball? I played it in high school, played it some in college. Um, I loved that. I loved track. That Those were like my two. I, I no was, one I loves loved, track. Come on. No, I ended up quitting track <laughs> because I didn't like the pre, like, like I was good at the mile, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and then to prep for the mile you just run a lot of miles and, yeah. I was just, and i was just like i don't like this anymore i liked it when it was like therapeutic and i could just like run and zone out listen to music but the older i get like my knees and hips are a real thing everyone's always like be kind to your knees and i'm yeah. like what the hell are you talking about now i'm like all right i need to get in a cold tub yeah but no i mean i love running i love being like active i love being outside like it's tough for me to edit during the day, so I'll go like and set and get sun. But no, I've always loved basketball. Like my idols growing up were like Michael Jordan, Allen Iverson. Like that was, yeah. So I love I love basketball. For me, it's just it's like chess meets like running. It's like you get to like mentally zone out mm-hmm. and be competitive and be active. Yeah. yeah, be active. But yeah, I've always I've always loved it. It never it doesn't feel like you're working out. That's why I love basketball. Yeah, you're tricking yourself. Let me go through some of these. Uh, oh. Hmm. Did you know that you're the reason I met Beyonce? <laughs> what? Yeah. Let's hear this story. Remember when you called me mm-hmm. to do Sierra's like mm. Halloween surprise birthday party for Russell Wilson or whatever? Yes. I met Beyonce there. Oh, was that, was she dressed up as Storm? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know it was her. Mm-hmm. So Jordan called me. Why, why'd you have me do the job, by the way? What, you didn't want to do it? I must have been busy. You were busy? Yeah. He called me. He's like, hey, tonight, Sierra Russell Wilson surprise party for Halloween. Can you go fil- uh, film it? I was like, hell yeah. So I go and um, I see Serena Williams there. Uh, Sierra, obviously, Russell Wilson. Um, what's the other girl's name that was in Beyonce's group? Oh, Kelly Ke- Rowland. Kelly Rowland yeah. And I recognize everybody. And then I see this woman. She's dressed up as Storm. She's got like contacts in her eyes and like I'm all like, white right? all white yeah. and i'm like she like turns and looks at me and i was like whoa i was like your eyes are sick can i take a photo of you and she's like yeah of course and then i take a photo of her and then i take a photo of her with serena williams kelly Rowland, someone else maybe and then i like all right i'm like all right she's like oh can you take a photo on my camera she hands me like a 5d mark three and i had a flash on mine so i was like yeah it's gonna be a little dark but i can do it whatever then I see these like big bodyguards around me and I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? So anyways, I take the photo and then I like walk over to my other photographer. He's like, bro, that was so sick. Do you know who you just took a photo of? I was like, yeah, like Serena Williams, Kelly Rowland and <laughs> some other chick. He's like, that was Beyonce. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, bro, you just met Beyonce, bro. I had no idea yeah. that I met Beyonce. So That's then afterwards cool. I like walked up to her. I was like, Hey, can I get a photo with you? <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, dude. She's sweet. She's super shy. Like, um, people ask me if I've ever met her before and I luckily have, but like the one thing that's always struck me is she's just like super like soft spoken Mm -hmm. and like, yeah, like her alter ego is really like her alter ego. Like when she goes on stage, she becomes like a whole nother person, but like, she's very like, yeah, soft spoken, quiet kind of at at least the times I've interacted with her, which is super cool. She was super cool. Super nice. Yeah. Is there any celebrity that you've met? who off camera off stage no performance you were just like what like in a good or bad way either (laughs) (laughs) yeah i definitely have both i mean i'd say the first one that like i there's two people that are like super like super nice that first kind of week that i was working with usher like we did saturday night live and will ferrell was hosting and he came into the green room and he was looking for usher and Usher was like on stage um, sound checking and I was just like editing pictures on my laptop. And he brought his dad in and he wanted to introduce his dad to Usher. And he was like, can, can I wait here with you until Usher gets back? I'm like, yeah. So like, and I was just like talking to him and his dad and he was just like asking me questions about like where I grew up. And he was just like the nicest guy ever. And I was just like, and obviously I'm a huge Will Ferrell fan. Like I love comedy and just his comedy in general. So that was super, super nice. And then obviously, like, I mean, Blake Shelton was actually really nice too. When we worked at The Voice, he was like, he was, yeah, super, he ended up getting a photographer for himself because he saw what I was doing with Usher. And like, they did this thing for Oklahoma. It was like a charity event. And so he, that was the first time he had his own photographer there. And he's like, look, I got myself a Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> he was like super funny and, and nice and like, he like like wanted to introduce me to his family and stuff. I just love people like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had not good experiences with people too, but I don't know if I want to put them on blast. But yeah, we don't you, have you, to do that. You could you could take a guess who you, some of them are. You could tell me off camera. Yeah, but we don't need to put anyone on blast. Yeah, <laughs> although it would make for some good good clickbait. Yeah, they, they can. They can uh, you talked about 
you when you when you see other couples you like to film them as well you made like a pretty cute video for kian and ayla oh yeah what was the inspiration behind that like why did you make a relationship goals video for that <laughs> <laughs> i think um i mean i've been friendly with ayla for a bit and i think uh I was like, why don't we just go to Mammoth and like rent a cabin and we could shoot some stuff. I just always look for excuses to like, like if I bump into people, I'll just like be like, oh, let's do something soon. And then like a lot of people in LA would just be like, yeah, yeah, And then yeah. like we'll, we'll never see them again. But I'll try to like think of something, like an excuse to like do something. And I, I think for them, I was like, oh, we can go to Mammoth and we can like, um, I know a cool place and we could shoot stuff in the snow and whatever, whatever. Um, and they were into it. So like, yeah, we ended up going and, and doing that. But um, yeah, I think it's usually just as simple as that. Like I just, if I see someone, I'll always like try to think of something cool we can do together. What do you think of like all the 1600 Vine people now? Like growing up, like Ayla has a kid. Yeah. Like I mean, she, Kian and her work out at the gym I go to. So I'll see them every so often. And we'll like get to touch base. I mean, it's awesome. It's cool. I mean, my sister just had like a baby too. So it's like funny seeing like these people in the different phases of life. Like Rudy and I, like we lost touch for a bit. And now like I saw him yesterday, we played soccer together and he just had a movie come out on Amazon. So like he's doing super well and I helped him like make the poster for his movie and stuff. So like we've recently reconnected, which is super fun. Batch lives two minutes from me. So I get to see him very often and like, um, Amanda, when she comes into town, I see her. I mean, it's it's cool. It's fun seeing. I just wish it. Um, I know everyone's busy, but I just wish like there was more excuses for everyone to get together mm -hmm. again. You know what I mean? You like, miss I, those times. I'm yeah. I miss the camaraderie. Same. I I miss the um, everyone having the goal of just being friendly and making stuff together because there wasn't that like there were jokes of like oh what's your rank zoo and stuff but it yeah. was like everyone was like making like logan was making stuff with amanda was making stuff with lele who was making stuff with you know what i mean everyone was just making stuff together it sucks when all of a sudden like i mean i get it people go in their different directions of life but it's like i just don't like when there's there the awkwardness there or there's yeah. like i just wish it was like more like like whatever a version of a high school reunion would be, but for like the Viners. <laughs> yeah. For like, you know what I mean? It's like, Hey, it's the five year anniversary yeah. of like 1600 Vine. Let's all like hang out. There's like, you'll sometimes bump into people at like events or whatever, but it's always weird. Yeah. There's like yeah. An uncomfortable energy. I feel like there can be, there can be, I try to break the ice the best I can. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I like, I, I, I loved it. I loved just like not knowing who you were going to bump into in mm -hmm. the hallway or, who you're going to grab dinner with that night because everyone's all together and like, let's yeah. just go, go to Katsuya right now and eat dinner. You know, like, I think I just liked that everyone was, everyone was hanging out and had a similar goal. Like, yeah. Hey, we like to make videos and that's what we do. Yeah. And then we would all hang out and do stuff. Like we'd go to the movies or we go to veggie grill all the time. Yeah. Or like nothing was planned. It was just not, like, yeah. let's go to dinner right now and let's go to a movie. Let's go to like a nightclub or whatever. Like everyone just, but here we to... are talking about the good old days. Yeah. Reminiscing <laughs> back in my day. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, dude, I appreciate you coming on. If you guys have any questions for Jordan cut, Taylor cut films, drop them in the comments. Uh, his podcast is called the creator convo it's on his channel this dude's amazing his podcasts have like full-blown edits it's like a documentary so go check them out it's inspiring me to be better at what i do and i'm honestly i'm super proud of how far you've come and you thank keep you. inspiring me even though it's been 10 years and i've been sitting right here so i appreciate oh, well. you thanks bro. dab me up and i'm oh, gonna smoke you. you on the basketball court Never. hit that subscribe <laughs> button and drop a like for the algorithm thank you